Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujits Blitz and today we are going to be building the ATST from Bandai. It's 148 scale. This is actually a beautiful little model. I mean this is the opening of the box so you can see what's in there. Again a highly detailed instruction manual, pretty straightforward. The parts are beautifully molded, nice and crisp with a lot of detail. You do get quite a bit for this kit. I mean, I'm sorry about the uh, zoom, everything there. It didn't really work. But you do get quite a lot for your book here. Um, you can see there, those are two Panther um, tank um, drives. <laughs> I couldn't remember the word. Anyway, you get quite a lot here. That's a big Chewbacca figure in case you want to do the Endor scene. I'm not going to do the Endor scene. And I really liked it. Again, like with most Bandai, you get the decals in two forms, water slide and the uh, sticker side. I'm not going to use either of them. The build, I'm not going to go through the build. I mean, there's no point. It's pretty much, you know, take it off the sprue, uh, make it pretty, and then stick it together as per the instructions. So we get straight into the initial build. We're just going to prime it. I'm using um, AK's acrylic primer here, mainly because I've run out of Mr. Hobby's Mr. Surface of black primer. And for, I can't get it for love and money here in the UAE. I'm not a massive fan of acrylic primer, to be honest with you. Um, you know, you seem to have to thin it very heavily. I don't mind that because I like having thin paint anyway, and going over and over and over. So all we're doing here is literally coating the damn thing in primer nothing else i also found that sticking the model on the base made it a lot easier because the base has two little pins that the the feet go into and it sort of allows it to stabilize i found that the model itself doesn't like standing on its own oddly enough um i don't know why but it just didn't it seemed a little bit sort of uncertain of itself and kept toppling over either forwards or backwards whereas on the base well, it, it was much more stable. So that's effectively what we did. This part of the build, well, I'm not, like I said, I'm not gonna show you how to put a model together. It's pretty straightforward. And there is nothing within this build that causes any undue complications or hardships. If there were, I would have showed you. So we're just gonna get really into the paint job. And as I said, we're just starting with the acrylic primer. And we then move on to the cockpit. I've already sprayed the cockpit a sort of darkish grey and now I'm going to pick out the individual lattice work whatever. I found no decent references on the internet or anywhere of the inside of an ATST funnily enough. So it was pretty much my own thing, do what I wanted to do. The thing about this cockpit though, I mean once it's all closed together you don't really see much uh, and that's quite annoying and I wanted this as a static model where you don't take the roof off left, right, and center. And uh, point to note, if I do one of these again, I'm, I'm gonna definitely put a light in that cockpit because what you're seeing here, all this is completely wasted. You don't see any of it once the cockpit is put together, but it's there and we know it's there. And it was, it was pleasurable to do. This is it without any of the washes put in. This is just the basic paint job. I then put a wash in it um, I use Tamiya panel liner actually, but I'm not going to show you that because what's the point? It's a panel liner. It's pretty straightforward to use. You know, dab it on, wait for it to dry a little bit, and then remove the excess with a little bit of uh, turps on a brush, and that's it. But I, I'm really disappointed that you you don't get to see any of this really once the cockpit's together, unless of course you take the roof off, which I don't intend to do. And I do have the cockpit open, so uh, you know. As I said, point to self, maybe it needs a light in there. And if I ever build another one, I will. Same goes with the figures. I mean, the figures are well detailed. But once they're in the cockpit, you don't see them, to be honest with you. I started with just a sky grey colour and then it lightened it out a little bit, added a little bit of features. I mean, this is it with its base coat. And then just picked out the individual figure. And there we go. That's what they ended up looking like without the wash. I didn't do any washes on them. That's the completed cockpit, and as you can see, with the roof off, it's perfectly fine and reasonable. But once the roof is on, you don't see any of it, uh, which is a, a lack of detail, really. I mean, you lose so much. But as I said, I mean, I know it's there, I know it's working, and I'm pretty happy with that. So, 
not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Just a damn shame that people looking at it aren't going to see it. So now we get to the main paint job. What I'm going to do, I'm going to spray it with a neutral grey first. Um, heavily thinned again. And then after the neutral grey, I'm going to progressively lighten the greys. And, and it, it's not going to modulate. So this is my first lightish grey. It's, it's like a sky grey from Tamiya. And all I'm doing now is, it's not colour modulation as such, but it kind of is. And I'm just trying to sort of get the tones and the contrasts in between the dark grey, which is the neutral grey. So I want to get it to that point whereby it has that movie feel. Because in the movie, it's a very sort of washed out grey colour. And that's what I'm hoping to achieve with these various greys. And then eventually I go down to the lighter grey. And as you can see, I'm spraying it in like a cloudy pattern. And the reason for that is because it, it, it makes it more uniform. It, it gives it more sort of visual depth, so to speak. It looks a bit weird once it's first sprayed on. But once the paint settles, it actually gives it a really good tonal base. And it sort of breaks up the pattern. And it, it's not so monotone. And that, that's the idea. And as you can see, I'm just doing that on the side here. It's like a cloudy pattern. So I'm not just spraying it on full on. Um, I'm clouding it so you get you get this mottled effect. And it really does bring out the model's look, I think, anyway. I, I do it on some of my armor models, and I certainly do it on air models that I do with an aircraft. But with an aircraft, you can use templates uh, to get the same effect. But you can see here that it's like, it's not a uniform gray that you're getting here. This mottled gives it this, this really good contrast, really good depth. And once the paints have all settled down and the weathering's been done and the chipping's been done, etc., etc., it really makes the model pop, I think, rather than just having a plain old boring paint job. Because at the end of the day, you know, you're layering four different, well, I layered four different versions of grey here, from neutral grey all the way to a light grey. So I started with a neutral grey. I then went on to a sort of, um, it, it, it's, it's actually called um, ghost grey. So I went from neutral grey to a light ghost grey to a sky grey and then finally ending up with a light grey. And this is the light grey that I'm putting on now. So this is the very last part. And as you can see, again, I'm doing, I'm only focusing on certain areas. I'm doing this cloudy pattern. And you get all the other greys that you've done come through. And that's the effect you're trying to achieve. You're, you're trying to get this tonal effect which draws your eye. And you're not going to be left with just a blank canvas of just solid grey. Because if that's the case, you might as well just throw them all out the window and use one grey and just spray it grey. And that's not what's going to make your model pop. Well, I don't think it does anyway. And that's the whole point of this i'm trying to make the model pop you know so you're not left with just a monochrome base effectively you're left with something that's interesting something that may be slightly realistic and this is what it finishes it's a bit washed out now like you get in the movie and this was the overall effect i was going for this washed out look and you know this is it with it's basic paint job. There's no weathering yet. There's no, I've done no pin washes or anything. Now I'm just going to spray it with gloss. I'm using um, the very, very fantastic gloss paint from VMS. I mean, it is a beautiful gloss varnish. And I'm just going to coat the model in that. And it settles down funny enough. So this is the model now coated with its protective gloss paint, allowing us to move to the next stage, which will be a pin wash followed by the weathering and everything's now sealed so I've got no worries about you know getting rid of the acrylic or in this case the lacquers so first off we start with the chipping and this is the first time I think I've ever used pure white as the chipping the initial chips so what are these are meant to do these are like the paint chips these are not the steel chips that you get through these are just the paint chips and the easiest way to do that on a model of any size is what we call the sponge technique. All you do is dip the paint, dip the sponge in the paint, take as much paint off as you can via the paper towel, and then just dab it. What you're left with is pretty decent chips, to be fair, paint chips. 
So the reason I'm using white is because obviously I've got a very light gray base. And then after that, we go in, I'm go, I go in personally with hand and I'm using AK's chipping color. It's, a, it's an acrylic. And I'm just gonna by hand add the, what we call the steel chips. Because my theory behind this is that, you know, this ATST is on end or potentially, and with all the forests and the trees and everything there, it's going to be chipped. <laughs> it's a simple fact of life. I mean, these things, are, it's quite a big thing. And going through a forest or wooded area, there are going to be chips. And I wanted to have that lived in look that it's a workhorse. It's a proper machine. It's not just a model that's meant to look nice. It's meant to have this lived in look. And that's what I'm going for here. So I'm just going over some of those white chips that I've added with the sponge method. And I'm just adding little drops of AK's chipping color, which is like a rusty color. And it really brings out the chip and it makes it look like it's a steel chip. It takes some time, not gonna lie, but it can be quite therapeutic if you're really into that thing. I mean, it, it clears your mind somewhat. And if you've got a spare evening, nothing more fun than doing a little bit of chipping to clear your mind and relax you out a little bit. It's 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 nothing difficult. It's not that difficult. As you can see, I start on the edges and move forward. Next, I'm going to start doing some weathering with the oils. Now, when I looked at the the uh, movie version, the bottom half is is quite mucky, a bit like when we did the at at. So what I'm doing here, I'm just adding some Starship fill from Mig's uh, oil brush range. Getting a brush almost dry. It's got a little bit of terps. And now I'm just going to blend it in to give it this grimy look. It's not a fake shadow. This is meant to represent grime, you know, dust and certain grime. And after I looked at, as I said, the reference pictures online of what the ATST looked like on Endor, it, it, it does have this grimy look to it. So that's what I'm doing here. And I'm using oil paint because oil paint allows you to work you don't need to work so quickly and it allows you to blend easily and then i'm just switching here to a dry brush bit of a bigger brushel brush to allow me to blend it even more to get the effect that i'm going for and if you look at the front of the nose where the guns are this is the effect i'm going for i'm going for this grimy sooty look it's you know this lived in it's a bit of machinery they don't look great I'm not going for dust because there ain't going to be much dust in a forest, if I'm being honest with you. So I'm going for the pure grime. That's why I'm using the Starship Phil. Uh, sorry about that. The, uh, the camera just had a sort of hissy fit on this bit and decided to zoom onto nothingness. But uh, it does get better. I mean, I'm still playing with the camera, uh, to be honest with you. And as you can see, it's zoomed in onto the legs. So this is, this is once I got the camera back to working positions, you can see the effect I'm going for here. You can also see what we had with the chipping and with the mottled effect that we did with the, with the actual airbrushing. And this is what we're trying to do. It's very subtle. It's just a little bit of grime, a little bit of dirt that catches in these areas. And as I said, when I looked at the reference photos, it was around these areas. And that's all I'm trying to get. That's all I'm trying to recreate. This, this dirty, grimy feel that we've got. And, and that's what we've got here. And, you know, again, it takes a bit of time, a couple of applications to get it right, to get the effect that you want. And it's just constantly blending and re-blending and blending and re-blending until you're happy with, with the overall look. And that, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just blending and re-blending, adding more where I think there's more needed, taking some out where I think some gets taken out. Uh, switching the brushes from the, the wettish brush to the relatively dry brush to get this blend to a situation because I don't like this I don't want the tide line there's a tide line you can see here and I want to get rid of the tide line so I go back to the brush with a little bit of uh, white spirit on it to just get rid of that tide line and this is you know it's just trial and error guys it, it's, it's fun to do. I mean, there's nothing wrong with using various different mediums. And I'll just keep blending away, you know, dragging the brush down until I get what I perceive to be a more realistic, grimy effect. And I, I think this technique is beautiful. I use it on my armor models quite, quite a lot 
to get this one. I used it on the Matilda, which I haven't uh, fully finished, to be honest with you. But it's, it's an easy technique to do, and it really gets you used to blending and um, you know getting used to oil paints. And, and this is the thing. And as you can see, it slowly, slowly builds up. So you really get this good, grimy effect. Now I'm going to do some highlights. Again, I'm going to use an oil brush. I'm just going to have some white. Um, and all this is going to basically disappear as we highlight it. So this is again the brush with the white spirit on it and I'm just dragging it down to get the highlights in the top areas. This is where the the light would hit the the vehicle. And it's not going to be all plastered in white. I mean, as I said, it's a very subtle effect. And over time as you blend away, it, it, it generally disappears. And it, it has the effect of washing out the original paintwork. So it really does bring this sort of highlighting technique along and this is what I'm doing here. Unfortunately I lost the footage of doing the rust washes which would have come next and I didn't bother to show you the pin washes because it's pretty boring watching people do a pin wash. Um, but I don't know where the rust effect uh, went but after this sort of highlighting stage we I added the rust effects which is basically again it was a uh, MIGS washes it was the I did, I did the streaking rust and the light rust wash and we got an overall tonal effect that gave it a sort of rusty very subtle rusty appearance on those areas where i thought there would be subtle rust and anyway this is the highlighting part and as you can see it's just picking out certain areas it, it's nothing too fantastic and this is what we end up with and as you can see you can hardly see the highlights now and I've highlighted all those top areas, the uh, the opening, the, the the shutters, and that was it. And I said I lost the the rust washing, unfortunately. So I'm now going to build a small base. I'm going to use the actual base it comes with, stick it on a piece of foam that I got from AK Interactive. And now I'm using like uh, I don't know what it's called. Funnily enough, it's um, well, it, what is it called? Hang on. Oh yeah, it's called Sculptor Mold. So I'm just using that just to build it up, give the terrain, because uh, I want to build up the terrain. I want to make it look a little bit more sort of lived in. The, the actual base for the ATST was bigger than the piece of foam, so I had to cut a hole in the piece of foam to stick the base in, which is pretty straightforward. And then that's why I'm doing the sculptor mode, because I needed to build it up to, to, to make the base incorporate with the foam. Um, but it's pretty straightforward to use, pretty easy stuff. You stick it in a cup. It's I think it's um, two sculptor modes to one uh, one water. It's like a plaster of Paris, really, with some fibers in it. And once you get used to it, you can really get some funky terrain going. And that's why I used it. And that's why it, you know, it's it's straightforward. Clay. I mean, it's difficult for me to get clay in the Middle East, if I'm being honest with you. And when I do manage to get it, it only lasts. It doesn't last long. The air drying clay over here because the, the environment doesn't allow it for that, to be honest with you. Everything sort of dries out really quickly. Whereas this sculptor mode, I've got a bag of it. I've had it for a long time. And it's just pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Very easy to apply, as you can see here. That's all I'm doing, just adding a little bit of a base. Nothing more than that. So once I've done that, I'm going to just uh, let it dry a little bit, which is what I did. And then I'm going to add the model itself um, just to give it some impression. So it's not floating above the ground. It looks like it's actually embedded because I'd assume this thing is quite a heavy thing. It's a big lump of metal after all. So I'm just going to sort of play around here to make sure it looks like it really is embedded. Um, add some more sculptor mold to, to make it look like it's sunk into the ground a little bit. And uh, I'll let it dry, not for long, you know, a couple of minutes, and then I'll pull the model back off. Uh, and it'll be fine. It'll, it'll then look like the model's not floating on top of the foam, basically, which is always the danger, to be fair. Once we've done that, I'm going to spray the sides of the base black. Uh, again, it's just the acrylic black primer. This is because when we finish the model, I'll, you know, I'll go over this with, with some more black paint just to make it pop a little bit and to get rid of the color of the foam really to sort of blend it in after all it's meant to be a little display so that's the reason why we're doing that pretty straightforward stuff you, you know you just spray the sides black to make it look pretty yeah 
nothing more complex really. After we've done that, what we're going to do, I'm <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have done this part, but I'm going to take some AK acrylic ground basically, and this one is the is the wet ground effect. It's called. Um, I, I don't know if I should have if I needed to do it or not, but hey, I did it. So there we go. This is it, the acrylic mud, and I'm just going to add that. Um, the reason being is because whilst the sculptor mode is good for giving me the undulations and a sort of look of the ground feel of what a forest would feel like, I wanted the, the I, I, I wanted the pigments that this acrylic mud gives. Once I've done that, I'm going to spray it uh, a, a brown colour, which is what I did, and then I'll just highlight it a little bit. This is to get the muddy sort of undertones that you get in a forest. Now, unfortunately, when I then started putting the groundwork together, um, the cable wasn't big enough for me to do the groundwork and film at the same time, so unfortunately you miss me putting a load of stuff down. Basically all I did, I started off with uh, the small flock, and then I moved to big, big grass tufts, and I just built it up to look like a forest. Obviously, I, uh, I did a bit of, I, I used the mud that I used on the base to sort of highlight the, the feet as well, because the last thing you want is... A different color for the feet and the base so remember that and that's what it ended up looking like as I said I'm fortunately I couldn't film me doing the ground work because I just it just wasn't big enough so this is what my model finally looked like I think it came out pretty okay um, you know you, you've got some pretty decent coloring going on here it looks like it's worn it looks like it's being used it, it doesn't look like it's just a display piece. It looks like it really does see some action going through that forest in Endor. You know, we've got some good weathering effects. I think, personally coming down, we've got the chipping, you know, doing what the chipping needs to do. We've got the light rust coming out. And I actually thought this model was a dream to build. It doesn't take long to put together. Um, if you don't want to paint it, you don't need to paint it. I mean, the Bandai models come like that. But I enjoyed this one, um, to be honest with you. It, it, it's a, it takes a, a weekend to build it, realistically. It takes a little bit longer to paint it if you want a really good representation. But it only takes a weekend to build the thing. And it gives you a pretty highly detailed and highly accurate model of an ATST. And I wanted this one to look in an indoor setting. I, I, I wasn't going to build a big tree. Um, I could have, but I didn't see the point because I didn't want the model to be overshadowed. And, you know, this is more of a vignette than it is a diorama. If I would have, would have put a big tree in there, then the focus of attention would have been on the tree rather than the model of the ATST. And nobody wants that. I mean, the idea is to show off the ATST. And that's the reason why I didn't go with any trees here. So maybe he's in a clearing on Endor. I don't know. But I enjoyed putting this one together. I enjoyed um, the fact that it was a, it was a dream build. There was no complications with it. The engineering was great. The detailing was great, and you really can let yourself go to an extent with the with the weathering. And here you can see the the rust tones that I put on to just to give it a subtle hue, a bit of a hint of uh, of dirt and grime and wear and tear over time. And, well, I think this one turned out okay, especially as it only took like a couple of days. It didn't take long, um, if, to be honest with you. And I tried some different techniques. I tried some different things. I tried some different blendings. Uh, I used more oils than I would normally use. Normally I use enamels to do some of the weathering, but this stage I, I did, I used oils a lot more. It had a lot more fun, to be honest with you. And that's the idea of modeling. The idea of it is, you know, for you to have fun, for you to enjoy putting together the model. And I must admit, yeah, I'm so disappointed though that you can't see inside the cockpit after you spend, you know, time detailing it. And after Bandai spend time, obviously, making it detailed, you just can't see in there, which is a bit of a pain in the backside. But anyway, as I said, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was fun. I thought it was funky. And, uh, you know... I'd, I'd like to make it again, to be honest with you. I didn't find it that expensive, and it, it made for a pleasant weekend. The thing is, I'm still getting used to trying to get some good footage when I'm actually making the darn thing. I mean, 
you have to appreciate it. I don't know, I've, yeah, I'm still sort of venturing into the realms of learning how to, to video the models effectively and to get some really good footage. I mean, come on guys. I started off as uh, doing a World of Tanks Blitz game, which is pretty straightforward. All you do is stick the replay on and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. This one's, you know, these modeling videos are a little bit more complex in that respect. And it's a learning curve and I'm getting there, I think. I am getting there. And uh, the, my little turntable, which I bought for like 20 dirhams, which is what, four pounds or something. Isn't the isn't the best? It's not a proper modelling turntable, which is it actually shoots around at a massive, massive rate of knots. And I I got it from a shop where I think it's meant to be for cakes, so you have to excuse some of that. Yeah, as I said, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing the best I can. It's a learning curve for me, but I think it's it's slowly, slowly getting better, um, as opposed to the first time I the first model I did, which was the snow speed, not the snow speeder, which was one of the tanks. That was a disaster. Whereas now it's slowly, slowly getting better. And I, I might move away from Star Wars. I've got a couple more Star Wars builds. I've got the Millennium Falcon to go. And I've got a speeder bike along with the Scout Trooper to go. But I might move away from Star Wars for the next project. And I'm thinking of building a Staghound armoured car from World War II. So that may be the next project. Now I'm going to see if I can improve upon this videoing. And these are just some close-up still, so you can see, you know, some of the techniques that we got going. And as you can see here, you know, the subtle blending of the various oils and enamels really allows the model to pop. Um, and this is what I was going for. And I think I think this model aesthetically turned out nicely. I, I think it worked. I think it worked. I mean, maybe you don't, but I don't know. And as you can see, you know, you've got some subtle effects coming down the side there, some of the rusting effects, and I, I, I personally think it worked out fine. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I've been Fujit. By all means, comment in everything below, because I'd be nice to hear your th thoughts on how the, yeah, you know, if if you like the model, if it was interesting, if it, you know, gave you any, any, any thoughts, or are there any techniques that can be improved on. And I'll leave you with the rest of these stills. And until the next time, guys, I hope to see you all again soon. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled. Hopefully the next video will be on a staghound. That won't be one build. That will have to be split over a couple of days. So there will be like three, maybe four videos on that one. We will see. But until the next time, stay safe out there. And I hope to catch you in my next video. Bye for now.